So how many people here have been to New Zealand? A lot? Yes? Yes. And a beautiful, beautiful, interesting place. The hot springs, the geysers, glaciers, kiwis. And uh, th there is someone else. There is something else comes from New Zealand. Um, <laughs> that I was talking about before. So, maybe she's got an exercise for us. Here's the, the one and only, Bev Rainbow. I'm back here at the Mona Vale Golf Club for the third year. I really thought I'd be somewhere much better by now. But anyway, anyway, here I am. I'm another year older. I've um, gained some weight, lost some weight. What are we up to? Oh, gain some weight. You know, look, I did join the gym earlier this year and they said to wear loose-fitting clothes. If I had loose-fitting clothes, I wouldn't have bothered joining in the first place. But anyway, I went along then, they had this fabulous new machine. I was on it for about half an hour. I started to feel really sick. Luckily, the machine just ran out of chocolate bars at the same time. <laughs> so that was lucky, but you know, I do try to watch what I eat, but I'm just not fast enough. <laughs> You know, I've just been away for the weekend to New Zealand and I arrive up at the Emirates um, counter there and there's this slim girl. Where do people that slim keep their vital organs, do you know? <laughs> and she looks me up and down and says, are you carrying anything you shouldn't be? <laughs> well, only 15 kilos. I don't know if I'm getting a little bit sensitive because earlier in the week I got a phone call from a charity and they said, could I donate some of my own old clothes to starving people? I told them where to go. I said, if anyone fits my old clothes, they aren't starving. <laughs> Look, the other issue I've got is my hair. People have more hair on other parts of their body than I've got on my head. But I found this great shampoo and it said, you know, for extra volume and body. So I've been using that and my hair's been thickening up, right? But, you know, I wash my hair every morning in the shower and realise it's running over my body. <laughs> I've biffed that out. I've got now palm olive dishwashing liquid. Says it's guaranteed to dissolve fat, otherwise difficult to remove. So, I've just started with that, so I'll tell you girls how I go. You'll probably notice on the golf course anyway. <laughs> with hair when you get older. You see these old men, they've gone bald, the hair's migrated from their head, it's now coming out, I think it's gone through their brain, coming out their ears and nostrils down their back. And it's not that pretty for some of you women either. I sort of like, it hasn't happened to hit me, but I do have a stray eyebrow just on my chin here, I like to put. slack with my health care and I, you know, listen to the ladies on the golf course all very busy, you know, looking after themselves and I thought I'd better be a bit proactive. So I went on the internet the other day, started at the A's, Alzheimer's, <laughs> read up all about that, can't remember a word of it. <laughs> and the next one was anorexia. Now this one I'm really worried about because it seems I've got one of the symptoms. <laughs> It says you stand in front of a mirror and think you look fat. No. So I'm going to have to check up about that one. But you know, seriously, I know some of you women have lots more problems than I do. And Lynn's not the girl she used to be. She's got a false hip. And, and we Wendy's got a pacemaker. Honestly, it's like an organ recital at this golf course at times. You ladies complaining that you have to get up in the night to pee. Just be great. 
grateful you're still getting up to pee. It's only going to be a matter of time, isn't it? And I know it's dangerous to get you, Tina, laughing. You know, just cross your legs a bit, you'll be fine. And, and what is it when you get older? You know, time goes so fast. Like, I feel I was only up here five minutes ago, and it's a whole 12 months. And my husband comes home and says, what did you do today? You mean it's over? <laughs> and if anyone invites us out after 8pm, we think it must be a sleepover. <laughs> and you really, you really wonder what our future's going to be. And I'd really just like to die in my sleep like my grandfather, not yelling and screaming like the passengers in his car. <laughs> earlier in the year and he was quite concerned we had an ageing membership like it was a bad thing <laughs> and we can't seem to get any young people to join so I've just worked out some of you older ones are just going to have to leave <laughs> but look um, seriously though we'll just get Gerard to get more cards for the likes of Moya and I'm, and I'm Type for a golf buggy to be attached to a Zimmer frame. I reckon that, that's got legs. <laughs> now, speaking about the pro shop, those guys in there think they're so bloody clever. They remember all our names. You can't print it before you get in there. You just give them 30 years and see how many names they can remember. You know? <laughs> now, notice I said guys because I've got no idea what their names are and there's only a couple of them. You know, you go a whole round of golf with three ladies. What's that, about four hours? And by the time they've put their buggies in their car, taken their visors off, their sunglasses off, put a bit of lippy on, you've got no idea. and didn't know he was playing with someone who was bald. <laughs> but I've got a real good trick. And you often see me, so people see me sitting at a table by myself and say, are you all right, baby? Your lady's coming in. I've got a real trick. I get in here really fast and I watch them come in. Got no idea who I'm playing. And they're looking, looking, desperate for someone to wave out to them. So that's my trick. <laughs> This year's McGough hasn't got any better and it hasn't got any worse. And um, I'm just finding, you know, my putting's really letting me down and the greens are so fast. I seem to be the only one that has to shout out four every time I put. <laughs> but I did have a good game the other week. In fact, you would have heard my name called, I think it was probably two weeks in a row actually. And I had a fabulous game and one of the holes I was so close. I just missed getting a hole in one by only three shots. I was really pleased about that. But I'm getting worried about this new slope system. It's just all Chinese to me. I can't understand it. Right? So um, now, Pam, you're going to have to close your ears because Pam doesn't like talking about bottoms. But for some of us, bottoms are a really big part of our lives. And, uh, you know, people have implants to get a bottom like mine. <laughs> but I was on the 14th hole and I was just ready to tee off and one of the green keepers bent down right in my line of sight. And I said to Beryl, now if I get that up as bottom, sorry Pam, would that be a hole in one? <laughs> now Beryl thought, and we'll have to ask Trudy this, Beryl thought it would be a plug ball, but she... wouldn't want to unplug it. So I guess you just play it from where it lies. Now the one thing that has changed
changed this year, I mean, well, has changed since I started at the golf course, is on the 18th hole, we just used to shake hands. Now, everyone's got suddenly so passionate, and if it gets any worse, we're going to have to book some hotel room. <laughs> you finish your round of golf, you've got, you get under someone's visor, your face furniture clashes, someone's all hot and sweaty, they're usually cheesed off because I've talked all the way around. And I probably don't like them anyway. a high five. <laughs> so on that note, I'll give you all a high five and have a great evening.